Hey everybody, Mac T back, and of course we want to get started today on this wonderful, nice weekend that is uh, really having uh, nice temperatures. Everybody wants to be outside, and of course I'm having problems with my phone here, uh, so hopefully y'all can see it. Uh, gotta, gotta take and uh, of course uh, get everything going here. All right, I'm back. Uh, phone's giving me discontent. Gmail is going nuts. But anyway, uh, besides that, I got a backyard full of preteen girls that are trying to wash a 150-pound Norwegian elk hound, and the elk hound is not playing fair. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I uh, got that under control. Sent Mom Osha out there to wrangle them up and leave the poor dog alone but anyway we want to start out with uh, of course welcoming our new members uh, who uh, have of course joined up with the group and I think we left off about the 28th of May I may duplicate a little bit here but uh, let me go ahead and read some of these off we got uh, Narazman Ken, Brett Hansen, Philip Rigsby, uh, James Bisden Frank Haddadin, uh, Steve Cole, Chris Story, Alex Cradell, James Kennedy, Don Mertz, Alex Rodriguez, Chris uh, Geraldin, uh, Rod McDaniel, uh, Angie Meeker, Crosswhite, Tillman uh, Bucknight II, and of course Alonzo Coleman, Brandon Bickford, Dennis Sheriff, uh, Kyle McDonald, uh, Siobhan Sai Gatam, Parmar VJ, let's see, Joseph Schneed, uh, Saranit Yadav, uh, Guantam Barat, Tully Yazzie, Jim Eston, Andy Rice, uh, Ziad Abel Baki, uh, Irene Scott, David T. Wells, and our latest one that just joined not more than woo, 15 minutes ago was Jim Rihada. And of course, that is all the new members we had. Nearly 30 of them for this last week, which stands up to our basic numbers uh, that we're doing. So the uh, group is growing and of course growing with the answers as we go, right? Everybody's taking and uh, doing that. Uh, take it, I'm working on that 200,000 mile mark. I'll add another 1,000 miles uh, just this coming week alone, and I will be heading off to uh, mostly Iowa, but I will be making a foray, and my last foray, uh, into Sioux Falls, South Dakota this uh, week. Uh, my, uh, my job there will be finished, and I will no longer be needing to drive to Sioux Falls. So, all said, uh, my Lulu Bell is going to get a break. No more Indianapolis runs and no more Sioux Falls runs, which we well over, I want to say, uh, six, uh, about 1,200 miles reduction a month in my runs. But that does not mean I won't be running my wheels off going back and forth from the paint can with Lou and doing lots of stuff. I still do look like I will be around the first part of July hitting that 200,000 mile mark and uh, it and folks this is not just one edge at 200,000 miles this will be my second edge that I will have driven to 200,000 miles so yes number two at 200,000 miles and so we're going to do something I haven't done with this one, and I'm going to aim for three to 400,000 with it. So we're halfway to my goal there. Half a million maybe. Who knows? We're going to drive the wheels off of this thing and put them back on and try to do it again. Uh, if the engine blows, I may throw another engine in it. You never know. And I'm sure y'all would love to watch me do that, wouldn't you? Yes. But anyway, uh, we are going to, of course, uh, be doing that. And... Uh, as with all things, I want to go over what's going on the site. We got a lot of folks posting out their uh, photos of their edge, some changing spark plugs, 
uh, which is always a good thing to do, maintenance-wise, always a good thing. Let's see. Campfires. Everybody's going out camping. It is summer, so uh, towing and camping and and uh, do whatever uh, you need to do. The Duratec never can blow. <laughs> yeah, well, there are people that uh, have blown them up, but we know why, right? Okay, water pumps. Woo, don't pay attention to them bad boys. They go. Kapooey! And, of course, we want to make sure of that. And I will tell you all that no two edges are the same. Both my, my edge and mine, totally different. My transmission temps, <laughs> I've been watching them. They're going back up again, folks, as always. And you all may get a bonus because I do happen to have a thermal, uh, transmission thermal bypass valve sitting in my parts box. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's a problem, but... You know what, I'm just about to the point, I may just change that bad boy out just to see if it makes a difference, okay? Uh, we're we're going to be a parts clown on that if we do it, so uh, I, I will tell you, there, you know, I got temperatures that are running in the low 200s, 200, 210 on transmission fluids, and then I look at my wife's edge, you know, my Lou runs 194, no matter what the temperature, it stays right down in there when I drive it on the on the coolant and uh, my transmission goes up. On my wife's edge, the coolant goes up and the transmission stays low. Go figure it. I can't figure it out. But I do know one thing. No one edge or one Duratec will operate the same. Uh, they all stay within the perimeters, but uh, you know, as far as that goes, yeah, you just never know. Uh, but I do do the foreskin quite often, so you folks can pay attention to those postings and those will give you operating parameters that are, of course, what I consider normal, okay? So uh, pay attention to those pictures I post up for screen grabs and video, and you will see uh, what a normal operation is as far as what I got mine running at. So they do help. They will help you out. And, uh, of course, we got Steven. He's out there buying every... I think he's almost got every tool snap on sales now. I think he does. I, I wish I lived close to this guy because, man, I'd be using those tools. <laughs> hey, borrow me this. Anyway, good on him. Uh, me, I'm, I'm over there at Harbor Freight. Speaking of Harbor Freight, holy cow. I went over to Harbor Freight and I thought, man, I got, you know, I got my air compressor. It's only a five and a half gallon. So I bought a mini scaler. You know, a little tiny one, has 12 needles to it. I figured I'd get in there on my Ranger and, the, and the, even the Edge, and, and I'm buying some uh, rust uh, 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 corrosion uh, converter, okay, some rust converter. And I thought I'd get up there and needle scale a little bit of the here, spots here or there under Lou, and then paint it, and then convert the rust and stop the rust. And then also for my Ford Ranger, that thing is nothing but a rust thing, and I wanted to get things uh, taken care of. So I bought this needle scaler, and I hooked it up my air compressor, ran it up. You know, it's five and a half gallons. I know the tool, the compressor is not sufficient for the tool. But I knew it would be able to run it for about a minute, because at 90 PSI, it would run like four, four uh, you know, gallons per minute or something in the airflow, okay? Or, or cubic feet per minute. So... Uh, I got the five, five and a half, I hooked it up, ran that darn uh, needle gun for about 40 seconds. He's going, burn, you know, going like mad, having a great time. Also, bleh, that's it, that's it, I, nothing. I let the compressor charge up, nothing. The thing died in 40 seconds. Now I got to go back and get another one, okay? So, I don't know, you know, Harbor Freight, or as one guy I watch on uh, YouTube, Harp, uh, you know, something fraught, harbor fraught or something. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, luck in the draw. Keep the receipts, folks. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've never had an air tool fell on uh, Harbor Freight yet. Uh, for the most part, they've always worked. I'm going to try it again just to make sure. Throw a little oil in it, see what it does. But, you know, it, it dead stop. The valve was froze and all I get was air rushing through it. Uh, so, you know, 40 seconds, not a good deal. But anyway, that's my uh, latest new tool review, <laughs> 40 seconds worth. But anyway, uh, we got a lot of folks out there buying the, the old HF tools, and they're, 
and they work. You know, what 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 do you expect? So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> we got Dennis. He's out there. He is a video logger to beat all. Uh, he's got some interesting videos out there. So what he's posting, watch them, folks. Uh, good good view into into Russia. Uh, he had quite a few interesting videos there and, and he has a great great looking edge too so uh, you know give him a couple minutes of your time to view what he's doing there and then we got uh, who was it uh, Geaton Coat oh my gosh he was flying with that uh, rework and his uh, front grill and he now he's came to a complete and utter stop uh, I'm no painter Geaton I could not tell you what happened but you did mention you did leave them out in the hot sun and and of course then you sprayed them with a with a clear coat and uh, yeah I don't know maybe some of you who paint know what happened I'm gonna assume that when you put the paint on there the seal coat probably dried too fast and pulled it in and and rippled the uh, the paint when it dried uh, or it's a chemical reaction I don't know but being they were out in the hot sun a cooler can it probably pulled it in because it wasn't the same temperature so you probably want to do that type of job in the garage or in a place in shade or something where the sun ain't direct uh, I've never painted out in the sun so I wouldn't know what to tell you on that but I if I do paint mine they're they're gonna be in the garage I'll just cover some stuff up and and do it that way you know so that could be it. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a painter. Uh, <laughs> can't help you on that. Uh, we had some posts on PTUs. Yes, folks, there is people out there yet. If they're not part of the Mac T Ford Edge group, they have no idea what a PTU is and how much it costs. So it's quite apparent the community has not gotten a word out about those. But anyway, uh, glad to see you too, Dennis. Good job, Dennis. I like watching your stuff. Uh, keep it keep it to the Ford Edge stuff. We're good to go. Anyway, uh, I did measure uh, my tires. I had my tire gauge on there in a photo. Uh, just messing around there and just trying to monitor those tires. But uh, as with all things, what else we got? Uh, headlight, Nick Roy. Uh, yeah, you're. I don't know. Are you barbecuing your headlight? I see that Weber grill there. Uh, I hope you're not barbecuing it, but. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it looks like you got a project there trying to seal it. And, you know, quite honestly, I'd look for any vent holes or anything and make sure they're clear. And then, uh, of course, I would probably take into my hands the same thing you're doing. I'd get some uh, silicone and try to seal up those little crevices I see and uh, just put a light coating on those and push it in with my finger and wipe it all down and see if that works. Uh, it couldn't hurt, right? Could not hurt. Uh, those uh, those bad boys are not cheap and of course we don't want to spend a ton of money on them so we want to make sure we try to get what we have to get done uh, let's see yes I did post I did uh, post that I bought a uh, you know the computer things here of all things you know that's all part of the Mac T Ford Edge YT is the computer stuff and I run off of, uh, gosh, I got a stack of these stupid things. You know, these things right here. I got a stack of these. Uh, you know, and, and I use a lot of USB hard drives. And I did determine in talking with man, oh, I'm probably doing it all backwards. Yes. Uh, I'm going to start processing my videos on the hard drive, saving them to the S. The USB drives and stuff so I can speed things up uh, you know I just uh, trying to figure out how I can save some time on this video processing uh, but I do have that card installed uh, I am NOT a computer guy uh, I figured it out I think because I do have my computer up and running plugged into the HMDI through the video monitor here so I think I did it I'm not sure how I did it. I went through and it wasn't working and I was unplugging and plugging back in and I was hitting buttons and doing all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, yeah, guessing, yes. But I did it, you know. Hey, don't be afraid to hit the buttons. Something's bound to happen, right? Anyway, 
<laughs> goes with cars, right? <laughs> Let's try this out. <laughs> you never know. That's all how it all works. Uh, four scan light and of course OBD links. Uh, MX and the V-Peak. I will tell you all that uh, I will get that V-Peak uh, video out there, but but if you want a preview on it, cheaper too. Uh, it is working. Uh, it is a cheaper alternative. So uh, that's all I can tell you right now, but uh, I still have some stuff I'm working on with that. Uh, let's see what else do we have going on here. Looks like I lost everybody. All right, I am back. For some reason, I got disconnected. Uh, don't know why. So if y'all give y'all a minute here to catch up uh don't know lost the connection folks so uh give me a thumbs up if some of you are back online here uh so i know that we're uh, good to go uh there i see somebody jumped on for whatever reason it, it kicked off so anyway i will say catching back up the v peak is uh of course doing well so thumbs up on that and of course uh basically uh what else do we have the stickers folks yes those stickers are still out and about and uh i have less than 50 of them left so uh if you want to get one i'm not ordering any new ones till i get these sold so if i run out of one color or the other first then we'll be down to just that one color until i get them all sold or i get very close to selling them all because here's the thing uh, there's a thousand members in a group, ten per, not even 10% of you are buying the stickers. So, you know, and I had that going in. I knew that. So, you know, we'll just wait and see. I know it's going to take a while. I figured the first little bit would go quick. After that, it's going to take a while. <clears throat> so, we'll, we'll just see where it goes and see what happens. But, uh, let's see. We got lots of folks posting their pictures with them on there. Uh, we got Kerry Jones, which is Bear Jones. Uh, he has uh, hit 201,000. It's a cat and mouse game between him and I. Of course, he's got that 2008 edge, and I got my 2011, and I'm catching him quickly. Uh, let's see. Canadians love buying new windshields. Just ask Andrew Jewett. He loves buying a new uh, window all the time because, of course, uh, what else are you going to do in Canada but buy new front windshields? So anyway, <laughs> watch those rocks. And then we had some funny stuff poked on poked on the YouTube uh, trailer of cars driving sideways and everything else. Oh yes, my wheel caps. I have went through a lot of work trying to do my wheel caps. And I have determined that, uh, you know, bleach, it takes a long time. But I have gotten the first cap cleaned, okay? And it is white plastic, no chrome on it, nothing. Uh, it took a lot of bleach to do it, a lot of soakings, but eventually ate it off. And I, and I will tell you the color changes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have this type of problem with the front grill inserts getting the chrome off of them. But I know these caps went from a chrome to a bronze to a black uh, or to a green and then to a black. Okay. Uh, that was the color changes they went. They like this corrosive looking green stuff uh, was on there. Then it changed to black and oxidization or whatever. But that was the color change on these caps. Okay. And they were tough to get off. They come off just a little bit at a time. It sort of like finds a hole and eats through it and it goes from the edges. Uh, then I took and uh, scrubbed them down with a, with a nylon brush after I rinsed all the bleach off of them. Then I put them into a container and muriatic acid, a little bit of that on there. Boom, all the black stuff disappeared and they turned, you know, bone white. And, of course, that's what you see in that picture. Uh, this is all for me to paint them the same color as my wheels and then fit them onto the caps. I will have to tell you, they're not quite the right size. They're just, 
you know, for whatever reason, not quite big enough. So I'm going to take a heat gun. I'm going to bend those tabs out just a tad bit to widen them out because they seem like they're just shy of being the right size. Uh, so I'm going to try that, and I think it'll work. And then, of course, uh, I will have caps over my wheel uh, nuts for my axle nuts, and you won't have to look at those old rusty uh, axle nuts anymore on my wheels, and then we'll be good to go. So that is what I'm working on. That's a long-term project. I'm not videotaping that mess because all it is is just stuff soaking in bleach. I don't know. There's lots of YouTube videos out there, and I tell you what, those folks that are using some of those uh, things they're saying they're cleaning that chrome off with, they are lying to you. Okay, that stuff don't. I tried the, the, the super clean. I tried the purple stuff. I, I, I even dumped these chrome caps in muriatic acid. Uh, I sprayed them with oven cleaner. Nothing happened to them, folks. Bleach was the only thing that was going to eat it off. Uh, oven cleaner, if those guys are taking it off with oven cleaner, they're taking off some weak bean chrome. That is not working, okay? I tried two different brands of oven cleaner and nothing was happening. It dead nothing. Okay, so, uh, you know, don't know. That, that, that just wasn't working out for me. So, uh, bleach worked, but it took a long time. That's it. I uh, got Nick Halstead. He's going out there making penny cars, you know, those little fat racers for kids. And he's got crayons in the background, so we know he's having fun. He must be on vacation before he's going on deployment or something. And then, of course, everybody's receiving their stickers throughout uh, the United States and Canada here. So proudly uh, put those on there. Let us sh show us what you got and where you put them. And people get ingenious with those things. And then, let's see, we have uh, jo Joseph uh, Zavani Jr. His daughter inherited a classic rebuild car. What a marvelous gift that was. Yes, uh, I don't know if that little girl knows what she's got on her hands, but, you know, she's blessed on that to, to, to give her that. Uh, that. That is a legacy to go down, even though it's a, you know, a kit car it's still something special so uh, congrats to her on that and let's see what else do we have we have uh, conversion kits for uh, headlights to LED lights I'm not gonna get into LED lights folks I'm just gonna tell you one thing and one thing only LED lights are in the infancy stage right now that's all I can tell you it's just like HID and everything else that starts it's in its infancy stage, so just give it some time, folks. They have their purpose, but I don't think they have a, a headlight purpose per se right now, but it will get better. I, I know it will. It always gets better. So uh, just keep that in mind. Let's see. Uh, lots of oil discussions. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, Lego Mike Orr, he's uh, changing plugs in a... I don't know, a Tonka truck? I don't know what that thing was. What was that, Mike? What kind of car was that? Some square cracker box looking thing. Anyway, he is changing plugs in that. Apparently, you got to remove the intake on it to do, get to them, too. And let's see. What else do we got? Traffic accidents that were happening. And, of course, the AC is working hard. So stay cool and, of course, stay in good shape. Uh, let's see, we got Kevin Mesner. He's posting some marvelous pictures. And folks, check that out. Kevin, good job. Congratulations. You folks need to pay attention to Kevin's photography because it is outstanding. And not only that, he's a good photographer. He has a good eye for placement. And that's really what's paying off for him. The, the camera and, the, and, the, and the, the, the filters he's using and, and doing that, that's all you know good. But he's got an eye for placement. You know, in other words, positioning, placement, view, scene, everything. He's got an eye for that. Uh, so he's doing really fantastic with that and throwing out some excellent photos. So give him a, you know, give him a hand. Good job. And, of course, he's doing excellent with that. He's so good that Ford sent him a letter and a calendar and a camera. So... You know he's doing good if they recognize him that much for that. And that is excellent on, on his part. And not only does he do the photography part, 
But keep in mind, he also plays music, and he is a, the one that you hear hits his music, the band of one, uh, in all my videos at the end. Okay, so uh, he's got more than one talent, folks, and he's a great person to talk to. Talk to him, good guy. So uh, give him a hand, give him kudos whenever you see him, because he is doing excellent work. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Tires, tires everywhere, but no one has a round one to speak of. Anyway, transmission, TSS, OSS sensors. We have uh, Ian Nathanson. Uh, Ian, I'm going to tell you one thing straight from Ford. Ford does not say to use, or Ford does say not to use any additives in the oils, transmission fluids, etc. I'm just going to tell you, they, they say don't do it, okay? Unless it is specifically uh, authorized by them, something that they've developed, okay? But they, you know, they're saying no, no to any additives. So if you feel you got to do an additive to your transmission, keep in mind, you got transmission problems. That's all there is to it, okay? Additives will only help a symptom. It ain't going to fix the problem. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so if you got additives, yeah, you got a problem. Uh, I, I made the statement that I drove my Ford Edge 100 miles without any fans in operation, and that is true, folks. When you get over 45 mile an hour, your fans will not run, okay? At least mine don't on my 2011s. And uh, the reason they don't is there's enough sufficient airflow going through the radiator and condenser to keep everything cool at that speed. Now you get below 45 and those fans will turn on. It just so happened that run for me was about 100 miles non-stop on the interstate, so my fans never turned on once, and my edge stayed cool. So that's, that's basically how it was. I was sort of playing, playing on that one a little bit. But, uh, hey, you know, got to prove what you can prove, right? So we went ahead and did that. Uh, let's see what else uh, we got here. That's about it. I'm going to go off into uh, the wild blue yonder here and, of course, go into the catalyst and exhaust systems. Wanted to give you all a little bit of an educational minute here on the catalyst and exhaust systems. And keep in mind that the uh, catalyst is uh, what you're going to be having there directly after the exhaust uh, manifold that you have. It's all part of the manifold essentially because it's bolted right up to the thing. And I'll explain why they have it positioned there so you can understand your catalytic converters and the reason they're where they're at and what they're doing. And of course it'll cover a little bit on there uh, what you're going to be doing. Uh, but the exhaust system has an exhaust manifold, an exhaust pipe, all that good stuff. We all know that. But it has about a half a dozen gases that run through that catalytic converter. And I'll explain what those are. As we have our nitrogen carbon dioxide along with H2O that is a byproduct of going through there. Uh, anytime you have that going through there. But you will also have your nitrogen oxides, hydrogen, and of course your hydrocarbons. So there's about six products that run through there, and of course a lot of those are air pollutants such as CO, NOx, and of course your hydrocarbons that are unburned. So basically these catalytic converters try to reduce those through the burning of them to, to depletion. Uh, so but you basically you have two heated H2O sensors in the exhaust system. You got your front sensors, of course, up front before the cat and then you have the ones that are after the cat, okay? So you got two what we call upstream and then two downstream. And uh, you guys hear me talking about uh, long-term and short-term fuel trims, okay? Short-term fuel trims are deducted from the upper oxygen, heated oxygen sensors, and the long-terms are result after the cat to what it's reading. I'll explain why these are important. But basically what you need to know on your catalytic converters uh, is basically a uh, catalytic converter it creates a chemical reaction because you have ceramic honeycomb going through those cats. If you're ever to look at them, they look like a square honeycomb going all the way through. And it's got ceramics and then it's got, of course, uh, a lot of, uh, pre it's got precious metals in it. So that's why cats are, are really, when you take your car to a junkyard, they rip those cats out and they put those cats in boxes because those things are worth some bucks, even used. 
So, uh, you know, the, the junkyard folks, they know what they're doing. Those cats, those are worth money. And they won't even sell them to you unless you can meet their price that they get, you know, it for somebody else. So they're going to be pricey, even used. So uh, watch what you got there. But uh, basically, the exhaust gases come in contact with this precious metal. And uh, basically, everything changes, and it creates a heating process that goes with it. Now, this heating process will not start because these cats have to do what they call light off. That means they have to get warm enough to even become, uh, you know, part, partly efficient. And that will happen between 475 to 575 degrees is when they're going to light off. Okay? So when you first start your car in the morning in the winter, what you're smelling is just raw fuel getting pumped through that cat because that cat is not hot enough to burn it off. So that's why you get that real strong fuel smell. Because one, your, your whole system is running on an open loop anyway, because it, it, none of the sensors are ready to go. Even in the summer, it's the same way. So we're just going and going until we get hot enough to start closing the loop, as they say, and then start lighting off them cats. And then, of course, the catalytic converter then, of course, gets all the uh, information it has, and it goes through it, okay? Now, once these cats start getting warm, they have to achieve an efficiency that they're running. Now, the problem is uh, that the cats, the before oxygen sensor and then the after, okay, the upstream and the, and the downstream oxygen sensor, uh, uh, the three-way three -way catalytic converters uh, basically re help take and convert these fuels, but what they also do with these heated oxygen sensors is the upstream and the downstream play together, okay, for the oxygen sensors between the cat. Now, what happens is, is that you need a, what they call that, a, a stoichiometric uh, uh, fuel air, air fuel mixture, okay. Now, for, uh, for your normal fuels, okay, you're less than 10% alcohol and all that stuff, you're looking for a 14.7 a to 1 ratio. That's what you want your air fuel mixture at. Uh, so it can convert it, but we want to make sure that it's efficient. So uh, when we're burning that, we want to make sure that that fuel goes in there. So it measures it as it's controlling the fuel going in to the catalytic from the engine. And of course, the, that one tells the fuel injectors how rich to make the fuel or lean or anything like that. It hits that, and then the first oxygen sensor says, okay, send it through the cat. Then the last one says, oh, this is what I'm getting at the end. So then the first oxygen sensor says, okay, fuel injectors, narrow it down, rich it up, whatever we're going to do. Then, the, of course, the last oxygen sensor does that. So the cat tries to convert all this and go through there. Only problem is, is uh, when you're starting to get an E85 uh, uh, gasoline going in there, guess what, folks? Here's a reason why you don't get as good a gas mileage, because the fuel to air mixture for an E85 operation is 9.8 9 to 1 air fuel mixture. Yes, that is what it is. So guess what? 9.8 to 1. That means you use 9.8 gallons essentially of air or pounds of air to uh, a gallon of gasoline so that means you actually have what you have less air going into there so therefore uh, you have other issues that uh, are going to play into the E85 rain and of course gonna cause your car to run bad so you can see why if you pour 85 uh, octane or 85, uh, E85 uh, gas hole into your regular edge, that'll mess your fuel air mixture up and your car will run like crap. So don't, don't mistake that. Uh, you'll have a problem with that uh, deal. Now, of course, the, the exhaust system is, is going to try to control all this. The catalytic converters can heat up. Uh, keep in mind, these catalytic converters can heat up to, up to 2,000 degrees for the ceramics. But anything after 2,000 degrees, the ceramics start to melt and start to decay and break up and all sorts of bad things happen. And if you get them that hot, once they crack, it's all downhill. And then you can break the piggy bank out to get that fixed. 
So, uh, but anyway, that is really what you need to take and watch for your uh, catalytic converters and everything that's going on with those because, uh, you know, pay attention to them. Your fuel air mixture, everything depends on everything else. And I think you all are watching me and seeing that, you know, all these sensors and everything always send signals back to the PCM and it, and it somehow manages the engine, fuels, how it runs, knock sensors, all this other stuff. Everything works together and that's really what you really try to make sure that you're doing when you're in, in operating on them. But basically that's in a nutshell what those things do. I didn't want to get too far in the weeds with it and uh, cause you all the you know, headaches or anything like that. So we'll just leave it at that in that aspect so that you can understand it. Like I said, just try to throw little tidbits out every weekend about how our edges run and how these Duratex and everything operate and what these catalytic converters can do for you and of course what they do for our environment. And uh, that is pretty much it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And of course, uh, by all means, uh, jump on to the uh, YT and uh, watch the videos I do there. And, uh, my, oh, before I forget, okay, I will be, like I said, working on the water pump video. I got this new video card and everything else. This water pump video is coming. Yes, it is. Don't know what weekend. I got, it's summer and I'm just up to here with stuff to do but I will get it out and it will be a really interesting video so that being said is Mac T and of course jump on YT and by all means join and subscribe there give me the thumbs up on that and of course click that PayPal button to donate and of course buy stickers five bucks each also Facebook jump on there join the Facebook group we're a good bunch of people on there and this is Mac T Ford Edge. Of course, you, uh, my feet hit the floor today, and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day, too. And then Mercy Grill's going to throw some one-liners at you. And then, of course, some great music by Kevin Mesner, one-man band. And, of course, that will be all I have to say today. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.